Let's dive into one of the most mind-bending genetic mysteries that's had scientists absolutely buzzing, the ridiculously high frequency of RH negative blood in Ireland. What we're about to unpack isn't just some random statistical blip. We're talking about numbers that make geneticists do double takes and completely reshape our understanding of European population genetics. First off, let's drop this absolute bombshell. While the global average for RH negative blood hovers around 15%, Ireland is sitting pretty with rates between 26 to 29%. But here's where it gets really wild. This frequency isn't evenly distributed across the island. Recent studies have shown that certain regions, particularly along the western coast, can hit frequencies as high as 32%. We're talking about one of the highest concentrations of RH negative blood types found anywhere in the world, and the distribution pattern is anything but random. When researchers started diving into the molecular genetics behind this phenomenon, they discovered something absolutely mind-blowing. The RH negative blood type appears uniquely often in Irish populations compared to the rest of Europe. Specific DNA variations create a genetic pattern found only in Irish people. But wait, because here's where things get even crazier. The RHCE gene variants appear at frequencies of 32% and 29% respectively in Irish populations. These aren't just random numbers. They're part of a complex genetic pattern that suggests long-term isolation and selective pressures unique to Ireland. The genetic difference between Irish and mainland European populations measures between 0.028 to 0.042, showing that Irish genetics are noticeably distinct from the rest of Europe. Now, get this. When researchers started mapping these blood type distributions across different regions of Ireland, they found something that would make your chromosomes dance. The highest frequencies of RH negative blood tend to cluster along the western seaboard, creating what scientists call a genetic gradient that mirrors ancient settlement patterns. This isn't just coincidence, it's a living map of ancient population movements and settlements, the really mind-blowing part is how these frequencies have remained so stable over time. Recent studies using advanced genomic techniques have identified specific regulatory elements in the Irish genome that might have helped preserve these blood type distributions over thousands of years. We're talking about genetic mechanisms that have been maintaining these unique patterns since before the Celts, before the Vikings, and possibly even before the first farmers arrived on Irish shores. And here's the really intriguing part. When scientists compared blood type distribution data with other genetic markers, they found fascinating correlations with certain HLA types and other immune system genes. This suggests that the high frequency of RH negative blood might have been part of a larger adaptive package that helped ancient Irish populations survive and thrive in their specific environment. Now let's blast into the deep prehistoric roots of this genetic phenomenon, because what scientists have uncovered about Ireland's ancient DNA will absolutely blow your mind. Recent archaeological findings combined with cutting-edge genetic analysis have revealed a story that goes way deeper than anyone could have imagined. Around 10,000 BC, as the ice sheets retreated, the first human settlers reached Ireland, and genetic analysis of their remains has revealed something absolutely spectacular. These early pioneers carried a unique genetic package that included specific variants of the blood type genes that we still see echoes of today. But wait, there is more. Ancient DNA analysis from sites like Mount Sandal in Northern Ireland shows these early hunters carried a high frequency of specific alleles associated with blood type variations, suggesting the foundations of Ireland's unique blood type distribution were laid right from the start. The genetic time capsule gets even wilder when we look at the Mesolithic period, around 8000 to 4000 BC. DNA extracted from human remains at sites like Sramor Cave and Killaruch Cave 
has shown that these early populations carried distinctive genetic markers, including specific variations in blood-related genes that were previously unknown to science. But here's where things get absolutely incredible. Scientists studying ancient DNA from Irish bog bodies and burial sites have identified specific genetic markers that show direct continuity from these ancient populations to modern Irish people. The preservation of these genetic signatures through thousands of years of subsequent migrations and population changes is nothing short of miraculous. The really jaw-dropping part comes from recent studies using next-generation sequencing techniques on ancient Irish remains. These studies have identified previously unknown genetic variants that appear to be unique to the Irish population and might have played a role in blood type determination. The story gets even wilder when we look at the environmental factors that might have helped preserve these unique genetic patterns. Ireland's position on the western edge of Europe, combined with its isolation as an island, created perfect conditions for genetic preservation. Scientists have identified specific selective pressures, everything from dietary adaptations to disease resistance, that might have helped maintain these unique genetic signatures. But here it gets really fascinating. Recent studies using isotope analysis, combined with genetic data, have revealed fascinating patterns about how these early populations moved and adapted. The evidence suggests that these ancient Irish populations were incredibly well adapted to their local environment, with genetic variations that helped them thrive in the specific conditions of post-glacial Ireland. The archaeological record backs this up with something absolutely fascinating. Evidence of continuous human habitation in certain areas of Ireland that spans thousands of years. Sites like Saeed Fields in County Mayo show that once populations established themselves, they tended to stay put, creating perfect conditions for the preservation of unique genetic traits. Hold on to your lab coats because we're about to dive into something absolutely mind-blowing, the potential connection between RH negative blood types and our ancient cousins, the Neanderthals. Recent genetic studies have dropped an absolute bombshell by identifying specific archaic DNA fragments in modern Irish populations that might be linked to blood type expression. Check this out. While most Europeans carry about 2 to 4% Neanderthal DNA, recent studies using advanced sequencing techniques have found that certain Irish populations carry unique combinations of archaic genetic variants, particularly in regions associated with immune response and blood type determination. We're talking about specific Neanderthal-derived alleles on chromosome 1, where the RHD gene is located, appearing at frequencies of up to 7% in some Irish populations. Scientists at the Max Planck Institute recently identified a previously unknown archaic hominin genetic signature in the Irish genome that's distinct from both Neanderthal and Denisovan contributions. This mysterious DNA, dubbed ghost DNA, shows up particularly strongly in regions associated with blood type and immune system regulation. The fragments appear in about 3.3% of the modern Irish population, and what's absolutely mind-bending is that they seem to cluster around genes involved in blood group determination. But here's where things get absolutely crazy. When researchers started looking at the distribution of these archaic DNA fragments, they found something that would make your ancestral DNA dance. The highest concentrations of these archaic genetic signatures appear in the same regions of Ireland that show the highest frequencies of RH negative blood types. We're talking about a correlation coefficient of 0.82, which is strong enough to make statisticians weak in the knees. But wait till you hear this. Recent studies using machine learning algorithms to analyze genetic data have identified specific Neanderthal-derived regulatory elements that might influence blood type expression. These elements, known as enhancers and silencers, show evidence of positive selection in Irish populations, 
suggesting they might have provided some evolutionary advantage. And the jaw-dropping part is the specific enhancer region located upstream of the RHD gene shows an archaic signature that dates back approximately 50,000 years. And get this, scientists studying ancient DNA from Irish archaeological sites have found evidence of multiple interbreeding events with archaic hominins. The genetic data suggests at least three distinct waves of archaic admixture, occurring roughly 55,000, 40,000 and 25,000 years ago. Each of these events left its mark on the modern Irish genome, particularly in regions associated with immune function and blood type determination. Now, let's dive into something that'll make your genetic markers do cartwheels, the absolutely fascinating story of ancient migrations and founder effects that helped shape Ireland's unique blood type distribution. Recent studies using advanced population genetics models have revealed some mind-blowing patterns that completely reshape our understanding of how these genetic traits became so concentrated in Ireland. Check this out. Scientists studying ancient DNA have identified three major migration waves that left distinct genetic signatures in the Irish population. The first wave, dating to around 10,000 BC, brought a specific set of genetic variants that included the precursors to modern blood type distributions. Using Bayesian computational analysis, researchers have estimated that this founding population consisted of just 50 to 100 breeding pairs, creating one of the most dramatic founder effects ever documented in European genetics. But here's where things get absolutely wild. The genetic data shows something called a serial founder effect, where each subsequent migration wave created its own genetic bottleneck. Population genetics models suggest that during the last glacial maximum, the effective population size in Ireland dropped to approximately 3,000 to 4,000 individuals creating what geneticists call a severe bottleneck effect. This dramatic population reduction amplified certain genetic variants, including those associated with RH negative blood types, to frequencies that would make population geneticists' jaws drop. The really mind-blowing part comes from recent studies using identity by descent analysis which shows that modern Irish populations share significantly longer genetic segments than expected by chance. We're talking about IBD segments averaging 8 to 10 centimorgans in length, suggesting extensive shared ancestry within the past 20 to 30 generations. This pattern of genetic sharing is particularly strong for regions containing blood type related genes. Now, get this. When scientists applied coalescent modeling to Irish genetic data, they found evidence of a population expansion pulse around 4000 BC that coincided with the arrival of agriculture. This expansion increased the population from roughly 10,000 to 35,000 individuals over just a few centuries. But here's the kicker. The genetic variants associated with RH negative blood types weren't diluted out as you might expect. Instead, they became even more concentrated in certain regions. The founder effects got even more pronounced during the Bronze Age migrations, 2500 to 2000 BC, when a new population carrying the R1B M269Y chromosome haplogroup arrived. Advanced DNA analysis shows these newcomers contributed about 50 to 60 percent to the modern Irish genetic pool, but somehow the unique blood type distributions remained stable. Scientists think this might be due to what they call selective mating patterns. Basically, certain populations tended to marry within their own groups, helping preserve their distinct genetic signatures. Recent studies using cutting-edge geographic population genetics have identified what scientists call genetic neighborhoods across Ireland, regions where specific genetic variants, including those associated with blood types, show distinct clustering patterns.
These neighborhoods align surprisingly well with ancient tribal boundaries, suggesting that historical social structures played a crucial role in maintaining genetic distinctiveness. And here's something truly remarkable. Researchers have identified specific selective pressures that might have favored the maintenance of Rh negative blood types in Irish populations. Environmental factors, including disease resistance and adaptation to the local diet, appear to have created what geneticists call balanced polymorphism, where having a mix of different blood types in the population provided an evolutionary advantage. Now hold on to your centrifuges because we're about to explore something absolutely mind-blowing, the remarkable genetic parallels between Irish and Basque populations. Recent comparative genomic studies have revealed similarities that go way beyond coincidence, creating what scientists call a genetic mirror across the Atlantic fringe. But wait, check this out. Both populations show strikingly similar frequencies of Rh negative blood types, about 26 to 29% in Irish and 30 to 35% in Basques. But the real kicker comes from the deeper genetic analysis. Using high-density SNP arrays, researchers have identified specific shared genetic signatures that suggest these populations might preserve genetic elements from pre-Neolithic Europe. We're talking about identical haplotype blocks spanning regions associated with blood type determination, showing matching frequencies of up to 82% between these populations. The similarities get even wilder when you look at the Y chromosome data. Both populations show high frequencies of specific R1B subclades, particularly R1BDF27, around 15% in Irish and 20% in Basque. But here's what's really fascinating. They also share rare archaic lineages of I2A1, which genetic dating suggests split from a common ancestor roughly 15,000 years ago. This timing coincides perfectly with the end of the last glacial maximum, when populations were retreating to refugia along the Atlantic coast. Recent studies using advanced phylogenetic analysis have identified what scientists call ancestral component clusters that are uniquely shared between Irish and Basque populations. But wait, because here's where things get absolutely fascinating. When researchers looked at immune system markers between these populations, they found surprising matching patterns. And here's something that's really amazing. Recent studies using advanced demographic modeling suggest that both populations experienced similar patterns of genetic isolation and bottleneck effect. The implications of these shared genetic patterns are absolutely staggering for our understanding of European prehistory. These similarities suggest that both Irish and Basque populations might represent surviving genetic islands from a once more widespread population that inhabited Western Europe before the Neolithic Revolution. We're talking about living time capsules that preserve genetic signatures from some of Europe's earliest inhabitants. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.